Hey everyone, and welcome to our first melee tier list for the beginning of the Sinful Season 1 of Shadowlands. Our previous tier list, which you can see on the screen now, was put together purely from the final stages of the beta, and as a result, there have been a lot of changes as well as current gear and soulbind levels being slightly behind, which has caused quite a shift in the overall standings. But now that the season is well and truly underway and players have had time to play and establish a meta, we've hit up our rank 1 consultants and worked together to put together what we consider to be a solidified early season tier list. For this list, we're going to be placing our melee DPS into four separate tiers, ranging from unranked up to S. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look and our course system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zipai, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So, if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked below. But enough talk, let's jump into the tier list. Kicking things off, we've got our unranked tier. The reasoning for having this tier is that the specs inside just haven't seen enough ladder play for us to see a true representation of how strong or weak they really are. That being said, these specs likely are underrepresented because they aren't that great. Whether it's the class itself having a much stronger alternative, or the spec simply having some fundamental issues that cause it to not see play. And the first spec finding itself into our unranked tier is Fury Warrior. Now, let me start off by saying Fury Warrior is a spec that is by no means bad in general PvP. It's strong in BGs and duels thanks to its very powerful self-healing and good mobility from the PvP talent Blood Rage. But when it comes to Arena, Fury has some very standout weaknesses, including a lack of mortal strike effect and very low consistent pressure on high armor targets. But most important of all, if you simply put them up against their arms warrior counterparts, Fury just honestly is worse in every single way, bar their self-healing, which results in them being extremely underrepresented inside of Rated Arena. Also grappling into our unranked tier, we've got the unique rogue spec of Outlaw. Outlaw is one of the most unique and rule-breaking specs in the game, bringing some great utility and control, being the only rogue spec still having gouge, as well as a shorter cooldown blind, thanks to the talent blinding powder. Although that's really Outlaw's only redeeming factor right now, as if compared to the other two rogue specs, they bring less consistent damage than that of assassination, less burst than that of subtlety, and as a result, don't really have a place. Outlaw is also not helped by its randomness of Roll the Bones and the removal of its ranged stun from between the eyes. Although the biggest reason for them being so rare to see in Arena and their placing in our unranked tier is much like Fury Warriors. They are just overshadowed by their counterpart spec, which in this case is of course subtlety. That being said though, if we do end up seeing even more tuning to sub, Outlaw could end up being the predominant spec in compositions like Rogue Mage thanks to their short CD blind as well as tricks of the trade. And the final addition to our unranked tier is Assassination. Much like Outlaw, it just simply doesn't see play due to the dominance of subtlety. Generally speaking, the only strength Assassination has had is its consistent damage. But in the current metagame, CC and Burst are at the forefront, and without the ability to Shadow Dance for extra CC and Burst, it means that it doesn't see too much play and falls into this unranked tier. But again, much like Outlaw, if we do see even more nerfs thrown at Sub Rogue, we could potentially see Outlaw or Assassination climb a lot higher on our list, especially later in the season with higher levels of haste, making Assassination's energy problems a lot easier to deal with. Alright, that concludes the unranked tier, so let's move on to the B tier. The first spec being placed here is going to be Frost DK. Frost right now is the predominant DK spec inside of 3v3, and the main reason for this is the setup that they provide. Granted, on their own, Frost is not too strong, but they make for a great complement to other strong melee specs like Windwalkers or Warriors right now. 
The combination of the Abomination Limb Necro Lord ability and their legendary of choice, Absolute Zero, makes for some extremely powerful setups that you grip a target, blinding sleep them all, follow it up with a Frostworm to stun them all, and then pop your Necro Lord ability to keep them from getting away. You combine this with the strong cleave damage of either an Arms Warrior or Windwalker Monk, and it makes for two very strong comps. Standalone, Frost doesn't do too much solo pressure. You've got decent damage during your setups and while Pillar Frost is active, but outside of that, you're not going to get much done alone. Not to mention, Frost DK is very weak defensively against other melee, resulting in a lot of the higher tier melee making their life a misery. Also falling into our B tier, we've got Unholy DK. The difference between Frost and Unholy is that Unholy is just a lot less burstier. Instead, they bring higher sustained damage, and as we all know right now, games are very short and damage is very high. As a result, Unholy's dampening-esque playstyle just doesn't have a place at the moment. Much like its Frost counterpart though, Unholy can make a very nice addition to certain melee cleaves, riding off the strength of either a Warrior or Windwalker. Standalone, Unholy is a little bit stronger inside of 2v2, whereas Frost is much more dominant inside of 3v3, simply for their burst setup. Alright, the final addition to our B tier is going to be Demon Hunters. Since the beta, Demon Hunters have received a fair few buffs to their damage. DH, much like both our DK specs, have been struggling in the meta. Their consistent damage output is still on the low side, even after a 5% buff. Their self-healing got nerfed alongside more bursts being added to the game, which hurt them defensively. So, if you compare them to any high-tier melee, they just don't offer all that much. That being said though, there is a few abilities which are making DH at least viable. The Night Fae Covenant ability, the Hunt, is extremely strong and deals a ton of damage, although it is very telegraphed. The Instant CC from Chaos Nova, Imprison, and Fell Eruption are also still very strong tools. And even the addition of Mortal Rush has helped to open up some different compositions, like when paired up with a Shadow Priest or Warlock. And strongest of all is the legendary Darkest Hour, which helps to band-aid over some of the hits to Demon Hunter's survivability. Personally, I don't think DHs are all that weak, the issue is more so that they are just heavily overshined. So, once we see some more PvP tuning, Demon Hunters will more than likely end up gliding up a few tiers. Alright then everyone, that's going to wrap up our B tier, and next up is our penultimate tier, the A tier. The first addition pouncing into this spot is going to be Feral Druids. Feral Druids, despite getting tons of new additions to their kit such as Cyclone now being baseline and Empowered Affinities, are just not quite as strong as we originally predicted from the beta. Where they fall short of our S tier though is their lack of real overwhelming pressure or any real standout broken mechanics. Granted, they can do good bursts during their Kyrian Covenant ability, Kindred Spirits, paired up with Tiger's Fury or Incarnation, and even the potential for insane one-shots with Convoke the Spirits. Their survivability and mobility is still very strong with Guardian Affinity and Bear Form to survive, and abilities like Dash or Stampeding Roar to build distance or maintain uptime while still providing good healing utility with strong instant heals from regrowth and the ability to pick up restoration affinity for spells like Swiftmen. But just in general, compared to the consistent pressure that a Windwalker can put out, the utility of an Arms Warrior, or even the off healing that a Ret or Enhancement Shaman offer, Feral, despite being strong, just doesn't quite stand out. To simply put it, Feral is the jack of all trades when it comes to melee, but master of none. But with potential tuning over the horizon, barrels are likely to go under the radar and become one of the most dominant melee if some of the much stronger specs do end up getting tuned as predicted. So watch this spot. Joining Feral Druids inside of our A tier is their partner in crime, Survival Hunter. Survival offers a lot of the same strengths as Feral Druid. It's got good sustained damage, decent burst with coordinated assault, and even great utility with tools like Roar of Sacrifice and Mending Bandage as well as their very strong instant CC from Freezing Trap and Intimidation Stun. However, it lacks that something special to elevate it to our highest tier. There's no overwhelming consistent pressure, no crazy off healing or burst damage, with its biggest drawback being right now how reliant they are on their pet, which can be easily cleaved down, and now with the 4 second cast time on Revive Pet, it can often mean the end of the game if your pet does go down. If we do see some further changes to stronger specs or even buffs to pet survivability or revive pet, there is a lot of potential for hunters to climb, especially now with their incredibly strong legendary effect, Craven Stratagem. Alright, so we've reached that moment you've probably been waiting for, which melees have made it to the highest rank of our early look Arena Season 1 tier list. 
first up and still locked into our S tier just like they lock you down in game, we've got Subtlety Rogues. Now, I know what you're thinking. Your favorite rogue streamer probably told you that sub is bad, right? Well, wrong. Sub rogue, despite nerfs to their damage and covenant ability, are still without a doubt one of the strongest specs. You have to only look at the ladder to see. Granted, they lack consistent damage and their burst has been notably tuned down a little. But the pure control that sub rogue is capable of, especially when paired up with a fire mage, more than makes up for it. And even despite the nerfs to their burst damage, rogues are more than capable of still 100 zeroing you inside of a stun lock. Just now, it's not something that's going to be happening every single stun without fail, at least so I'm told. But the reason a lot of rogues are complaining is thanks to the next spec charging into our S tier, Arms Warrior. It's safe to say that Arms is just absurd right now. I mean, what do they even lack? Arms bring some of the craziest utility in the game with the return of Intervene, alongside tools like Overwatch, War Banner, Master and Commander, and even Disarm. This overloaded utility kit combined with their absurdly high consistent pressure, combined with improved mortal strike effect from Sharpened Blade, makes them one of the powerhouse melees in Arena. Even defensively, they're extremely strong, with the return of Ignore Pain alongside Spell Reflect, Defensive Stance, and Rallying Cry. This toolkit as a whole does come with a certain skill requirement in order to maximize it at its fullest though. However, with the strength of Warrior right now, you can put them in almost any composition and they're going to do very well. Coming in next, we've got a spec that I think has took everybody by surprise with their strength, a spec that has been predominantly at the bottom end of our tier list for some time now. Yes, I'm talking about Enhancement Shaman. No, this isn't a cruel joke. Enhancement Shaman has actually climbed all the way up to our S tier. So, what's changed? Well, honestly, not all that much. But we have one of the fastest paced metagames we've seen in a long time, which is primarily fueled by strong melees. And what spec makes the perfect partner for them? Well, of course, Enhance. Not only do Enhance bring both Bloodlust for themselves and their cleave partner thanks to Shamanism, but also Wind Fury Totem. That's without even covering their own personal strength. Thanks to Maelstrom Weapon, Enhancement is capable of some of the highest instant off healing in the game. Oh, and I haven't even touched on the best part yet, their burst damage. Ascendance, Chain Harvest, Doom Winds, need I say more? Chain Harvest combined with Maelstrom Weapon to increase its damage and make it instant, Doom Winds every one minute to pair up with Shamanism, and of course the absurd burst during Ascendance. Granted, Enhance is still very squishy if focused down, but pair them up with a Warrior for some added survivability, pair it up with your own off healing, and you can still be decently durable. Okay, so our next spec is again one that you wouldn't usually expect to see in our S tier. A spec so bad at times, it's often even the target of numerous memes. Retribution Paladin. Rhett right now has probably the highest off healing in the game, with Word of Glory paired up with the Healing Hands talent, making every Word of Glory pretty much a lay on hands, while also having borderline illegal burst damage during their wings, especially combined with the talent Seraphim. Oh, and don't get me started on their Curian Covenant ability. It's called Divine Toll for a reason. For the mental toll, you have to pay when a wreck gets lucky with this and deletes your entire health bar. On top of their strong burst and ridiculous off healing, rets also bring great utility to their team with all the regular blessings. So protection, freedom, sanctuary, and now sacrifice, which helps to further reduce some damage. The meta is also in rets favor right now with games being so short and burst being so high meaning that these strong defensives like Bubble and Blessing of Protection and even Sanctuary go a really long way. Rhett though still does have its standard weakness of low mobility, nothing's changed there, but in a meta full of melee cleaves, it doesn't really matter in the majority of matchups. Last but definitely not least, we've got Windwalker Monks. Windwalker Monks bring one thing in abundance and that is damage. The high consistent pressure coming from constant Rising Sun kicks, Fists of Furies, and Blackout Kicks makes for one of the most overwhelming melees to face. Not only is their consistent damage absurdly high, their burst is also on a whole different level. Duen, the White Tiger, combined with the Invoker's Delight Legendary, gives you enough haste that you're essentially playing with a Bloodlust. Combine this with the Curian Covenant ability, Weapons of the Order, and Combat Meditation, providing you a ridiculous boost to mastery. 
Pair this damage up with the instant CC from their newly reduced cooldown on Paralysis, and your enemies are not going to have much fun. Windwalker also has decent defensive CDs with Fortifying Brew, Diffuse Magic, Fists of Fury paired up with Turbo Fists, and of course Touch of Karma paired up with their mobility to further avoid some damage. Despite these cooldowns, they are still very fragile, with Burst being so high, you can very easily die through your Touch of Karma. Nevertheless, Windwalker is well and truly deserving of their spot in our highest tier. Alright everyone, that's going to be our early Season 1 Shadowlands melee tier list. On screen now, you'll see a recap of all of our melee and where they've been placed. To get more information on any of the melee featured in this list, be sure to check out our new courses over at skillcap.com, giving you all the information you need to improve your rating in this new season. And as always, if you enjoy this type of content and want to be notified the second we release anything new, be sure to like this video, ring that bell, and hit that subscribe button. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.